good. By golly, I'll tell you what. Hello again, everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside, and we're geared and ready to go, which should be a great, great program today, Dave. Oh, you're right. We're going to have Jeff Jarrett in here. He'll be going against Rooster Codwin. Interesting match there. A bit later on, we'll have that big team of the Nasty Boys in. Single match with Big Bubba going against the singing cowboy Don Bass. What a single match it. we got there. And that's not all. Expiration of time match coming up today. Giant match. Billy Travis and Mark Starr will be going against Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka. And that is expiration of time, and yes, we're hoping to have plenty of time for that son of a gun. I got to tell you, in addition to that, we'll have a little clip that I think you've got on the Super Tour. We'll yes, be sir. telling a little bit more about that. All of that lined up. We better get on with it. We'll be back in just one moment. <laughs> George Barnes and Rocky Johnson have had a few little problems in there. I think most people know that uh, George Barnes interjected himself in about where he hit Rocky Johnson, actually hit Rocky Johnson. George, we are due an explanation for the kind of conduct that's been going on. Let me tell you something, Mr. Russell. George Barnes doesn't have to explain to anybody. I explained to nobody. I gave up explaining to my mother and father when I was 18 years of age. So I don't have to explain to you, and I don't have to explain to you, I don't have to explain to anybody. I make no apologies for anything that George Barnes does. Mr. Russell, let you me... You hit Rocky Johnson. I hit Rocky Johnson. Big deal. In my opinion, Russell, Bill Dundee happens to be the best wrestler in the world today. And also, in my opinion, Rocky Johnson happens to be the laziest wrestler I have ever seen in my entire life. You said in your opinion. In my opinion. And my opinion is the only one that counts. Okay. Listen, it's, it's my opinion that Rocky Johnson took a walk when Bill Dundee was in dire straits when he needed him the most in that title match. And who got in and helped Bill Dundee? It wasn't Rocky Johnson, no. No, sir. Rocky Johnson was out walking around somewhere. Rocky Johnson does what Rocky Johnson does best. Rocky Johnson takes off. Well, in my opinion, I told you that Bill Dundee was the best wrestler in the world, and my opinion is that I'm equally as great as Bill Dundee, and he deserves the best. Therefore, that's why George Barnes is George Barnes, and I make no apologies for him. And if you ask me why I decked Rocky Johnson, you want to know the answer yes, to that, Mr. I would Russell? Like to know. You really would know yes. the answer? Well, I just don't like him. Oh, well, that's a fine explanation. Well, you hear it from George Barnes. Uh... Dave, how about telling them about the uh, Super Tour that's coming up? Okay. Yes, indeed. Super Tour action coming to the territory. Some of the greatest talent, maybe the greatest collection of talent uh, assembled in a long, long time. I've got to tell you. Here is more about Super Tour 87. <laughs> Championship Wrestling Super Tour 87 is coming soon to these cities. The heavyweight champion of the world from Robinsdale, Minnesota, 247 pounds. He is Kurt Henning. So Double drop kicks. Fires back with a series of fists and... Working the ring. At 250 pounds. From Midland, Texas. The great Indian chief, Wahoo McDaniel. And his tag team partner, DJ Peterson. Has made a tremendous impact in the AWA Rochester. Oh! He tried to work the suplex. Now suddenly he was jump is covered and almost out of it. He couldn't quite get Sukov up as high as he wanted him. And here, here we go. Here is the sheet. And he comes. And this one is out of control. There's no two ways about it. As And now up, out, and over goes Zukov. Unbelievable. 
cheeks. And I wouldn't want to be in his shoes right now. I'm telling you, Ray Stevens. Oh, look at there. They've already split the cheek open. I've Did never you? seen anybody put a mark on the cheek before. Oh, oh. Look at the champion. The champions are laying out here. I cannot believe what Wahoo McDaniels and P.J. Peterson have done to the world that you champion. And also the Sheik. And now the Sheik is left standing alone as his charges. Zukov and Ustinov are both outside of the ring. Zukov on his hands and knees. at some of the talent you will be seeing when Super Tour 87 comes your way. Right now, let's go to the dressing room where Lance is standing by. Lance? Okay, Dave, here of Scarab schedule. We only get an opportunity going to interrupt Jeff. I know you got a match coming up here in the rain, right Jeff, but we wanted to catch you to get a comment about this Mid-America title defense right. you've got coming up with the clone. That's right, Lance. As you know, as a champion, you got to defend your belt uh, once every 30 days, but the, I'm not going to let the 30 days come up. Anytime I get a, a, a contract, I'll put my name on the data line, and I guarantee you, I'm not saying I'm going to win this match, but I guarantee you I'll be ready, Lance. Boy, this guy is tough. Now, remember, they took, the clones took the Southern... Hey, there's your music All right. right there. We have It'll be a tough match. I'll be ready, Lance. Good luck to you, Jeff. Jeff Jarrett heading to the ring right now. Okay, Davey. There he is, Jeff Jarrett, his opponent in the ring right now for a one-fall 15-minute time limit match out of Skull Bowl, Tennessee, 210 pounds, introducing Rooster Cockburn, and going against him from Nashville, 208 pounds, Jeff Jarrett, one-fall 15-minute time limit, Jerry Calhoun, the referee. Just about set and ready to go. Rooster Cogburn explaining his version of the rules to the referee and Jeff Jarrett. Here we go. Both wrestlers.
wrestlers about the same size. Cogburn with a two pound weight advantage, but look at the moves here. I think you'll see quite a difference. Jeff Jarrett. Oh, Brewster went after him. Jeff just helped him up into the air and then slammed him right down to the mat. Left arm bar by Jeff Jarrett. Off the rope, Brewster Cogburn with a big upper arm. Jeff Jarrett now. Boy, incredible balance. I'm still amazed by the way Jeff Jarrett has uh, has come on in a really short period of time. He's been in professional wrestling. Well, let me tell you, uh, Rooster Cogburn is a guy that Jeff could easily overlook because Cogburn is very fast himself. He is. Cogburn, wily veteran, I guess is a good term for yes, Cogburn. Sir. Body slam right in the middle of the ring. Jeff follows it up with a right hand, but he missed. Cogburn had moved, and Jeff rammed his fist into the mat. Look at Cogburn. Boy, he grabbed, he's trying to seize the opportunity and run with it. Side suplex by Cogburn. A cover. One. Oh, one and a half. Cogburn upset with the referee. He thought he got a slow count. Jeff Jarrett whipped into the ropes. Cogburn with an upper arm. And a cover. One. Jeff again kicks out of it at two. Ooh, Jeff having his problems right now as Rooster Cogburn going in there and they block. Goes with the suplex. Jeff gets him over and down and changes the tide. Jeff says, how about the right hand? Trout says, yeah, Jeff lets it fly. Cogburn bounces off the rope. Jeff, oh, that very high drop kick and a cover. He got it. Two. Drop. Yeah. What a perfect drop kick he got. It. Two minutes, 11 seconds. The time on it. And Jeff gets the win. Okay. We'll be back. Let's go to a break right now. Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum, stand by. What a night of action for championship wrestling. Nick Bockwinkle and Jerry the King Lawler, brother, they always battle it, will be going for a shot at the world heavyweight title. Here's Bockwinkle. For years, I have heard the king of the south, the southern heavyweight champion, that the title almost exclusively belonged to you, Mr. Lawler. And I'll accept that. You know why? Because the AWA Heavyweight Championship of the World, for 10 years they called it Bockwinkle's title, Nick's title. They're going to do battle for the Heavyweight Championship of the World, for Nick's title, for Bockwinkle's title. Well, we're going to do it again. Now this time, you can be the king of the South, you can be the king of wrestling if that's the way you feel about it. And I'll claim that the Heavyweight Championship of the World is mine and the title's always been mine. But when it's done and over with, neither one of us will really want to talk about what they call our titles, but which of us will step into the ring with Kurt Henning for a shot at the heavyweight championship of the world, which was my title for 10 years. Yours is still a dream. My dream's been fulfilled. It's only a slight nightmare that I'm going through right now because I don't have the heavyweight championship of the world. I love, I love to defend the heavyweight championship of the world and have you fail time and time again, Mr. Lawler. So I'm going to come back, and I'm going to step into the ring with you one more time. And I'm going to give it to you straight and simple. You cannot be the king any longer, or the southern heavyweight champion, or even the top number one contender, because I'm going to beat you, and I will be the number one contender, and I will step into the ring with Mr. Kurt Henning. Goodbye, Mr. Lawler. Oh, yeah, that by itself is going to be a wheel of a match. Bockwinkle and Lawler are coming up Wednesday night, Evansville Coliseum. Have the whole card for you in a few minutes. <laughs> okay. Bill Dundee, Rocky Johnson. Rock. Uh, just, uh, How you doing today, bud? Can I just add a couple of things, brother? 
I have seen Jerry Lawler hot, and I know when he has his heart set on something, he usually does it. Brickhouse Brown, I wouldn't be you for all the tea in China, boy. Now, I'm also happy because I got something else to talk about. And it's a tag team championship match between the sweet man, the soul man, and the superstar. Now, when you remember when he came back from Africa, he told you he was 307 pounds. We've been in the gym, we've been training, we've been working hard because we had to defend them belts. And he's down to 265. And Diamond and Tanaka, that whole 265 is going to take it out of you, brother. And I'm just going to be along for the ride. Tell him, big boy. Rocky yeah. Johnson! Rocky looking in great shape, and you got a big defense coming up here, partner. And it's something everybody, I think, is going to be I let you in. talk. I didn't say a word. Are you finished? Yeah, I'm finished. Talk. Okay, tell them what fine. we're going to do. Let me tell you something, brother. Me and you are the champions, right? You know that. Mm -hmm. But I work just as hard as you work for that belt. But there'll be no more title matches, Bill. There'll be no more matches what? for me, period. Because you have a serious problem, brother. And your problem is your goofy friend, George Burns. Now, I'm not wrestling no more. I'm not wrestling ever again until I get a match with your goofy friend, George Burns. It's just that simple, Bill. I like you. You're a great guy. We've traveled all up and down the roads together for 10 years. We've done it all. We've worked out together. we trained together. And we've partied together. But I just want you to know, and I'm telling you right out here straight, and I hope it doesn't affect our friendship, but I'm telling you straight, brother, there's no more wrestling for Rocky Johnson until I get a match with George Burns. What about this situation, Bill? You, you, no, Bill, I like you. You're a great guy. Like I said before, I'm not going to keep repeating myself because it's an emotional thing here for me to get out here and tell you this. I hope we, we can re remain friends. Whew. But as far as wrestling, Lance, now tell all the wrestling world, wrestling is my life. And it's my living. And I've spent all my life in this business. I started as an amateur and went on to become a professional wrestler. That's all I know. I know nothing else. But I'm making this statement right now on TV. And I mean it, brother, from my heart. And it's a hard statement to make. But I shall wrestle never again will I put a pair of wrestling boots on until I wrestle George Burns. Now, I know I'm going to beat George Burns up. It's just that simple. And I'm not bragging, but I'm going to kick his hind in because I don't like him. Now, he got out here and said he didn't like me, fine. I didn't like him, but I let it slide because wherever you were, he was around. So I put up with him, but I'm not doing it anymore, Bill. I'm finished, I'm finished wrestling until I get him. Now, I am definitely, and I'm telling you, and I'm telling the whole wrestling world, I definitely, I'm gonna beat up George Burns. Well, there's out in the parking lot that don't make me know, never mind, brother, but I just don't wanna get in trouble and end up in jail. And I would sooner it to be in a ring. Until that day happens, you can forget about Rocky Johnson as a professional wrestler. Uh, Eddie, uh, Eddie Marlin. Let, let me interrupt you just a minute. I can understand how you feel. I don't blame you. I sympathize with you. But we've got a tag team title match signed, the contract signed. And as you know, the AWA rule, if the champion has the match signed and he fails to show up, he forfeits a forfeit, a that's right. Now, you say you and Dundee has been up and down the roads. You're thick as brothers. That's right. If you think that much of Dundee, you'll put your own personal feelings aside until you have this title match and not force Dundee to have to forfeit the belts, too. Let me tell you something, Eddie. Like you said, I think an awful lot of Bill. I consider Bill my brother, and I mean that from my heart. And it's very emotional out here for me, but let me tell you something, Eddie. You're a nice guy, and I like you. But you must be getting a little old. See, I put a lot of thought in this. This ain't something I'm just out here now rapping about. I put a lot of thought into this. I think you better go back and check that contract because I didn't sign it. Well, Rocky mm -hmm. Bill signed it. Well, Eddie, I'm Rocky. This bill there. And I didn't sign it. Like I said, I put a lot of thought into it. I put an awful lot of thought into it. So why don't you go check your contract? Bill, I want to shake your hand, say you're my friend, and I hope we stay that way. But take this to the bank, brother. I will one way or another, beat up George Burns. I will check it now. Get back with you. Yeah, we got to know because uh, it's a title match coming up. Bill, uh, we got to get a comment from you on the situation like this. I don't know. You tell me. Speechless. I have no earthly idea. Well, there's the comment. Uh, you heard what Rocky said, that there will be no title defenses until he gets a match with George Barnes. And 
and Eddie is back to check. Rocky says he didn't sign the contract for it, so we're going to have to... Okay, I guess we better get on something else. And by golly, I'll tell you what. we got a couple of guys that blew in on the scene, and they are bad news. They are big, they are mean, and here they are right here. The nasty boy. Randy Bryan. Randy Bryan out of Bartlett, Tennessee is going to be his partner today. And then across the way, at a total of 568 pounds, out of Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sag, the Nasty Boys. This match one fall, 15-minute time limit. Referee Jerry Calhoun. Well, I, I tell you, in what little we've been around them, their name really fits because we've had a lot of guys, Dave, that holler and scream and do all that, but you're talking about a couple of guys that are just downright nasty. Well, it's Brian Nobbs starting out. Jerry Sag slips through. Randy Bryan on the other side. Brian Johnson certainly giving away the size and the nasty boys come in with quite a reputation in the AWA. Tag from Brian Nobbs to Jerry Sag. Brian shot into the rope. Oh boy. Double elbow twice. Yeah. Boy, I tell you, these guys are something else. Look, they got Brian by the hair and just ram him into the top uh, turnbuckle there. Jerry Sag. Big broad arm. Caught him right across the chest. All over to the corner of the tag, and Brian Nobbs will be coming back in. Randy Bryant. Picked up by the neck. Thrown into the ropes. Oh, sorry. Very close line. Now throws him over to the corner and says, tag your partner. Here's David Johnson. He came in with a right hand flying, but he was slowed down. Hey, look at David. And here comes the other one after. Grabs him from behind. He had a chokehold on it briefly. Runs, uh, runs into a knee coming off the rope. Nasty boys. Pretty well having things their own way here so far in this match. Non-stop conversation with a referee. Every move they make, he's got to, to tell them you're breaking the rules. They're using fists. They're pulling hair. They're doing whatever is nasty. And with Johnson on the ropes, Nobbs nails him in the midsection instead of uh, when he's off the rope. There he got him on. By golly, it was a broad arm right to the midsection. Look at David Johnson fighting his way back. Coming off the rope, bam! And as he leaned in, he was no match for Brian Nobbs. He's down. Tag on Jerry Sag. Nobbs was inviting Johnson. He says, come on, get me. Come on and get me. Well, he tried it, but uh, Brian Nobbs came out the best on that one. Jerry Sag with David Johnson on the mat. Ooh, right fist. Referee warns him. They, their response to the referee, as you mentioned, he was talking to him constantly, was their, their response to him is shut up. Leave us alone. We're yeah. doing this. Yeah. David Johnson off the rope, big clothesline again. Brian Nobbs with a cover on him, counts at two. He picked him up. Yeah, he picked him up just before the three count fell. The referee stopped the count at two. The Nasty Boys apparently just have decided they're going to turn this one into a workout. Oh, that could backfire man, on you sometimes. Oh, look at that, though. David Johnson off the rope. Jerry Sag drops down. He's using a, an abdominal grab, something, uh, an old submission hold that you don't see too much anymore. But Kojo Yamamoto was, Kojo was very uh, effective with it. Yeah. Did he get him? What did he get? One. Uh, oh. I think he stopped, he picked him up before the uh, three count. Yeah. David's shoulders were up and down, and we had a one, we had a two, we had a one. In the air with him, David Johnson on the shoulder of Jerry Sag. He tags Brian Knob, nails Randy Bryant, and poor David is left in there with the two nasty boys. Oh, look out. Ooh. He not only got the clothesline, he was catapulted in, and that's going to be it. Three minutes, 
47 seconds. All nasty boys. Brian Nobbs and Jerry Sag as they get the victory over David Johnson and Randy Bryant. 3-4-7 the time. Yeah, I think uh, this is a team that will bear watching because in the short time they've been here, it has been good night out of the cage again. Come spike and spot. Downtown Bruno with the moon dog. Stay there. Let me tell you something, Lance Russell. Let me, before I talk about my tag team here, my moon dogs, let me tell you a little bit of something about Jeff Jarrett. He thinks he's a champ. He thinks he's a mid-American champ. He thinks he's one of the great ones, don't he? Well, let me tell you something. Jeff Jarrett never stepped in a ring one-on-one, -on -one, eye to eye, toe to toe, with a clone. Let me tell these nine to five humanoid lifers out here something, see. They never, all these Hammondagers never seen nobody like the clone. The clones made up probably the greatest tag team in the history of professional wrestling. Now, one of them's out right now. That's right. <laughs> so I got the other one, brother. And he's going to take that Mid-America title off Jeff Jarrett and put it around his waist. Now you know why I say the clone is the greatest professional wrestler in the world. And now I got my moon dogs here. We're talking about Spike and we're talking about Spock. We're talking about Top. We're talking about Bad to the Bone, brother. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on now. We're talking about bad to the bum. We told everybody exactly what we've been going to do to Jeff Jarrett, and we done it. And then you got a big goofball named Big Bubba that thinks, that thinks he's man enough to do something with the moon dogs. Well, let me tell you something, Lance Russell, and all these people out there for their information. <laughs> He ain't. And he got a mystery partner, huh? I don't care who he gets. It don't matter to me, Lance Russell. He can't carry a load. I don't care who his mystery partner is. It's like Mama says, it bees that way sometimes. Well, you better pay attention to it because he does, in fact, have himself a mystery partner, and your moon dogs are going to have to meet Big Bubba uh, and his mystery partner in there. Yeah, Eddie? Lance, I went back and checked just like Rocky said, and Rocky is right. He, he did put some thought into this. Uh, he, he did not sign the uh, title contract? No, sir, in the past. Dundee signed one, Rocky signed one, but his name is not on the contract. So that gives us an out on the title match where they wouldn't have to for forfeit the belts. So I'm going to sign the match with uh, Barnes and Rocky. There will be a single match then. Rocky's going to get the uh, single match with Barnes. But I'll have to get back with you in a little while because this changes everything. This changes the whole card. It really I'll does. I'll give you the card in a little while. Okay, so the title match is X'd, and uh, there will be a, a single match with Barnes and Johnson. Big news. We'll take time out. Be back in a moment. Coliseum seven matches, and I mean some dandies. Opening up, Pat Tanaka in a single match with Mark Starr. Paul Diamond going against Billy Travis in another single. Brickhouse Brown faces John Paul. Grudge match with Big Bob and Goliath going against the Moondogs. Won't that be a goodie? Mid-America title defense. Jeff Jarrett facing the clones with downtown Bruno. Then a big one, George Barnes and Rocky Johnson with Bill Dundee, the special referee. Brother, that ain't is going to have the old, old Evansville Coliseum shaking right there. Final match, take a listen to this. The winner to get a shot at Kurt Henning, the world heavyweight champion, Jerry the King Lawler will be facing Nick Bockwinkle. And again, the winner, this is how big it is, the winner will be getting a shot at the world heavyweight title. You got to believe that Wednesday night is going to be a very special night right there in the Evansville Coliseum. Hope to see you out there. <laughs> Don Bass, the alleged singing cowboy, climbing into the ring right now. Never has the word alleged been used more properly than it was right there. <laughs> he, uh, oh, hey, he and uh, Big Bubba going at each other already. And no time for introductions, I guess. We'll do it as we go along. Look out, Moon Dogs jump in with some boards. Immediate disqualification. Big Bubba being hammered with boards by the Moon Dog, Spot and Spike. Paul Diamond, Pat Tanaka are holding the door. Oh, I see. They got a guard. Yeah. To the area where some of Bubba's friends are, and they're trying to break it through now. But speaking of breaking, I mean, the Moon Dogs are blistering Bubba. He's busted open, bleeding. Diamond and 
Tanaka holding the doors. They're blocking access from the dressing room. Uh, and a boss winner is across the studio. You can't see him. But he's, he's blocking the other doors with somebody else who I can't make out. But that's Boss Winter and somebody over there. So all the entrances and exits are, are being blocked. And they are just flat working Big Bubba over here. Moondog Don Bass. Bass not really doing much except wandering around the yeah, ring. Yeah, that's, that's it. But boy, I'll tell you what the Moondogs are doing, Plenty. They Killing Bubba. They have busted every board three different times right on his head. His head bleeding and Bubba laid out in that ring. What an attack on Big Bubba. And I mean just blatant. Absolutely. They finally broke through the doors over there. Diamond and Tanaka couldn't hold him any longer. And there go Diamond Tanaka, the Moon Dogs downtown, Bruno Winters, and everybody else. And poor Big Bubba. He is uh, going to be declared the winner, Dave. Uh, and it was very short order, too. Yeah, it was five seconds, the official time. But my goodness, he is he's not in good shape right now. Okay, while they uh, tend to Big Bubba, we're going to uh, take time out. We've got plenty more action. We've got Diamond and Tanaka and Travis and Starr in a great expiration of time tag match. We'll be back to it in just a moment. <laughs> Uh, still to go here is we got Diamond and Tanaka. Travis uh, and Starr will be uh, coming in here for what is going to be an expiration of time match. And boy, I got to tell you, this uh, this should be some kind of a dandy of an expiration of time match. Uh, let's see if we can get them in here right now. Where is it? Okay, here we go. Wait, hold it, hold it, hold, hold it just a second. Hold them out. Bill Dundee coming back out here and... Uh, I don't sympathize with Bill's problem. It's signed, Bill. I guess you know that with Rocky and uh, George going to be in a match in there, and uh, that's bad news. Lancer, have you ever been caught between the rock and the hard place or whatever way you want to put this thing? Now, Rocky Johnson and I first met in 1976. That's a long time ago. We drove up and down the road. We've been successful as a tag team. You know, and he'd go off on a tour some way, and then we'd get back together, and I'd go off on a tour some way, and we'd get back together. And we're back together right now with the international tag team That's champions. That's right. Okay. Now, George, we grew up in Balmain, Sydney. And let me tell you, folks, that's one of the baddest places in Sydney. Now, we itty-bitty fellas, we went to school. We played hoogie together. We run around together. When we was big enough to drink, we went to the bars together. Kind of went before we was old enough to go. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and then we came here. We was a successful team. And then for some unknown reason, George says, Bill, I just got to go home, man. He says, I'm, I'm you know, he says, I just got to go home. As well, George, I'm staying, brother. I wish you lots of luck. But over the years, we kept in touch. Last Christmas, I went home to Sydney, Australia. I stayed with George. It was really me invited him back. I said, brother, you got to come back to the States. Here he is. Now, I can't make him like Rocky. And, and I can understand why, you know, but let me put it this way to you. If you and Rocky Johnson, forget about George, just say you and Rocky. Get into a little argument. You slap Rocky or Rocky slaps you. And then he walks over to me the next day and he says, Bill, me and Lance Russell just don't get along, and I don't want you to like Lance. Now, do you, do you see what I'm saying to you? Because I understand it's, oh, it's, it's, it's yeah. you, you, George is a boisterous, braggart, docious, whatever you want to put it. Bill, but the I, truth is, he's not the easiest guy in the world right, to like that, or to get along with. That's what I'm trying to say. I understand that. So it's easy for you to say, well, you know, but he's my buddy. We grew up together, brother. We've been up and, you know, all around the world. You know, so, but Rocky, I love him like a brother. Now. I have got to choose. So I, the easiest thing to me would be say, well, I'm going goodbye and walk off. That would be the easy way. Just build on the butt out and don't, you know, but it don't work that way. You know, we wrestle for a living, but we have feelings too, just like everything else. There's a heart beats inside of me, you know, and sometimes it may be a little black or it may be whatever, but I have feelings, and I have feelings for both their men. One for 10 years and one all my life. So I ain't turning my back on none of them. So. It would, it would be the easiest thing to do, just, 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 just walk away. But if you can honestly look at that TV screen and say, just, I would watch what I'd do, I'd walk away, well, then none of them would really be your friend. But I love them both. Rocky Johnson, I love him like a brother. 
George for as bad-tempered as he is and his ways. He's an Australian, I'm an Australian, and, and he doesn't quite understand how it is over here. But it's just a personal thing between him and Rocky. So they're going to fight. And well, Yeah, they're going to so, fight. You know, and I can't stop it. But I can do this. And Eddie Marlin, I know you're standing back there and all I want you to do, because it's nobody else's business but Rocky's, George, and Bill Dundee's, because I kind of feel like, well, I introduced them to one another and it was just like oil and water. So the only thing I'm saying to you, Eddie, if they're going to fight, let me referee it. And that way... What? Uh, that's right. Just let me be right there. Just oh. And they beat one another up, and that's fine. But I'm going to have nobody else. Just let me referee it. Bill, uh, I don't know whether you've thought this thing through or not. You're in a bad enough position with both of them being okay. your friends, but, but you're, then, you're saying okay. let you referee right. the match. If it just walk away, when it's over, and it'll be over, somebody will get beat up, and it'll be the end of the thing, like that's what happens in a fight. Somebody wins and somebody loses. Then they both have the right to come to me and say, Dundee, you turned your back on me. Rocky Johnson has the right to say it, and George Barnes has the right to say it. Now, what kind of friend would it be to either one of them? So all I'm saying is, Eddie, I'm begging you, please, let me referee the match. Uh, okay, Bill, uh, not an enviable position in any event to be in, but to say, let me referee the match, I, I well, okay. I kind of understand what he, uh, you there, know, it is a hard situation, situation in there, because he and Rocky have been, boy, just thick as the, and uh, it just is a situation where George Barnes, all of his life, now, frankly, I don't know how you can love a guy, but as Bill said, uh, he's watched his back and he's been a friend of his for a long, long time. So it's Bill's problem, and he has, he has asked to be uh, the referee. Okay, I think we're ready to go now, if we can get a hold of this bell down. Okay, we've been looking forward to this one, too, and we've got some time up here on the clock. Hack Tanaka, Paul Diamond, Billy. Travis, Mark Starr. Oh, boy, Dave. Should be a good match. It goes to the expiration of time. Travis out of Lexington, Kentucky. Mark Starr out of Tampa, Florida. They weigh 455. On the other side, Paul Diamond from Thunder Bay, Ontario, Canada. Pat to knock out of Hawaii. They weigh 437, and they have downtown Bruno in their corner. Match goes to the expiration of time, and who's going to start? Billy Travis looks like, and Paul Diamond, perhaps, for his team? Billy said, hello, say hello to my mama in hello Lexington. Mom. Hello, Hello, Ms. Travis. Right. <laughs> Prime yeah. time, baby. It's like mama says uh, it bees that way sometimes. You missed me over here, Lance Russell. I know you missed yeah. me. Everybody yeah. missed me. I'm the best in the West, baby. The best in the East. The best in the North and the best in the South. Because I am Don Tabro. And you know what? You're not. <laughs> uh, yes, and the only thing I can say to that is amen. Thank you. Indeed. I agree with that. Thanks, Bruno. That's nice just guy. what we need. We've got a Way good match we want to take a look at in here. So how about let us... a good match because prime time's involved there. Prime time's involved there. Mark Starr with yeah. that arm barred right up to the shoulder on Paul Diamond. Both of them tall. This is a good pairing, Star and Diamond. About the same height. Most of the people in the audience, and probably most of the people viewing on TV, got buck teeth. You ever notice that buck teeth? I gotta wait it all year without ever hearing that. But who in the world that downtown Bruno in the middle of a match like this would have come out with a comment? Watch the hanging on to that arm now, Pat Tanaka. Tanaka, the martial arts expert, and Paul Diamond, the rugged Canadian kid who is all muscle from head to toe, going against former Southern Tag champ Billy Travis, who just took over for Mark Starr. Woohoo! Hey, Jimmy, oh, a ride! Wow! Yeah. All right, Billy couldn't hold it for a three count, but boy, great move by Travis. trying to get him back where he belongs down here. Look at Billy, he's got Paul Diamond. Monkey flips him out of the corner and covers. Right in the middle of the ring, he's got a two count. That's all he got, though. Boy, here, here in the ring right now,
right now. Four dynamite young guys, huh? What, let's go to the tape real quickly and watch Billy with that move he put on Tanaka as a live action. Here, here it is. Billy whips him around off the rope. Look at that as he just snaps him up and drops him right down to the back line now. And you can see Billy down here on the floor. He was shoved out of the ring by Paul Diamond. Tanaka grabs him and rolls him back in there. He got him a good one, too, Davey. Tell you what. Billy, so far, looking real good. Mark Starr. Look at Mark go with that right hand. He's out of the battle, both of them. Billy sees that they're both in there. He turns. And now all four of the wrestlers are in there. Referee trying to get it back to one against one. A good drop kick by Mark Starr. And a cover on Pat Tanaka. Oh, Diamond off the rope. Tanaka has Starr's shoulders down. He got a three count. First fall is going to go to Tanaka, Diamond, and Brutal. that way sometimes. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, and, and it's a good thing you put it just that way, Diamond and Tanaka, because it was Diamond coming off that doggone rope. Uh, rope. Or it would have been the other way, in my opinion, on it. But that's the first fall of action in there. Ed, wait just a second. Let me get around here. Eddie Marlin. Lance, I was back there talking to Bill, and if I was Bill Dundee, I think I'd just take off running. He, he's, you know, he's got his hands full. I don't understand why he wants to do it, but I respect Bill enough to know that he's got his personal reasons, so Bill Dundee will be the special referee. And in a match with Johnson and Barnes. Right. Like oh, say, boy. I, him, I am with you, Eddie, I got to tell you, but I appreciate you coming out and telling us that. So uh, Billy got his request, and that is that he be the referee, referee in that special match with Rocky Johnson and George Barnes. That's a dandy. Tell you what, we've uh, got time, I believe, for more action falls. Let's take time out right now. We'll be back with it in just a moment. <laughs> action ring in just a moment we got the king here and we're going to be talking to him about what may be and of course there's a lot of been important ones but maybe one of the most important matches he's ever had with nick bockwinkle because uh, the winner gets a shot at the world heavyweight crown uh jerry before you get into that i gotta say also on the card wednesday night at the coliseum george barnes uh, will be going against rocky johnson what a wild situation and bill dundee wants to referee this well all i can say about that i want to see it but i wouldn't want to be in bill's position he's in a no-win situation there he's going to be in the ring between two guys that are both close friends of his. Yeah. And, uh, It'll it be a heck of a fight, isn't it? It should be interesting, but I, I wouldn't okay. want to be in Bill. Enough of that. We've heard from Nick Bockwinkle. I want to hear your comments about this very important match coming up Wednesday night. Well, you, you've got that right. It is important, and it's real hard for me to relate to the fans out there just how much this match means to me because... Uh, uh, I, they all know that I've faced Nick Bockwinkle any number of times, but the majority of the times that I've wrestled Nick in the past, he was always the world heavyweight mm -hmm, champion. He had the belt in his possession, and I was wrestling him to try to get the belt. This, this is a little bit different situation. Most of the fans realize that Nick has lost the title to Kurt Henning. Uh, he's the new AWA world champion, and I saw tapes of that match, very controversial finish, and, and if you ask me, uh, Larry Zabisco was involved, and I just personally don't feel that Kurt Henning is the, is the caliber wrestler that Nick Bockwinkel is. Hmm. That's why this match becomes so important, because now, whoever wins between Bockwinkel and myself is the, immediately the number one contender and gets the shot at Kurt Henning. So, Bockwinkle is standing between me and what I feel is the World Heavyweight Championship because if I can beat Bockwinkle, then I know, Lance, I can beat Kurt Henning. And Bockwinkle knows that there's a lot, there's even more riding on this. There's a personal situation, too, where he was involved in this little incident oh, yeah. that just happened between Idle and Rich. So, Bockwinkle, I got to go through you to get the title, and I'm going to do it in Good luck Wednesday. Okay, we'll uh, slip back into the ring here. If we got the time, we'll check it out in just a moment. We had a scheduled interview with. Uh, Big Bubba. I don't see Bubba coming out. Here comes Jeff Jarrett uh, out. 
Doug. Bubba, I said I didn't think he was being able to come out here. Uh, Jeff. That's right. As you said, Bubba was scheduled to make an interview out here. But it, the people just saw Lance, you saw him, the people at home saw. He just got his brains beat out by the Moondogs. I mean, in the worst way. And with the time and time, time again. After time. And the guys held the door. But Bubba was going to come out here and say he had a match coming up with the Moondogs. You know, I got a match against the clone, and that's said and done. But Bubba was supposed to finish his score with the Moondogs, and he was going to have a special mystery partner. But I'm going to spoil your surprise. I'm going to spoil the people's surprise. And Bubba, I mean, Bruno, I want you to listen up back there. He was going to have a mystery partner, and I believe you know this man real well. His mystery partner was going to be Goliath. <laughs> now, Bruno, you know how big and how bad Goliath is going to be. And when them two guys get in the ring, they're going to be all business. And I'm going to add a special stipulation. Bruno, you listen good to this one. I'm going to walk out with them two guys, and I'm going to be in their corner. If you even act like you're going to get in the ring, Bruno, I'm going to beat your stinking brains out. Okay, Jeff, we appreciate you coming out and telling us that. Boy, that's a, uh, that's a dandy because we got a situation where both Goliath and Bubba used to be under the management of downtown Bruno. And, of course, after today, you can bet bad, 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 bad news for the Moondogs. Be interested in seeing it when that bout comes off. In the ring right now, Billy Travis, Mark Scar. Mark not looking happy at all, holding his head where he got glom from behind. Bell time, Pat Tanaka starting off with Mark Starr. Remember back, it was Diamond who came off the ropes and nailed Starr. Tanaka covered him. They got the one, two, three. Woo, handful of hair. The referee gets on Pat Tanaka. Second fall of action. Our time running out. He would have had a three count if Diamond hadn't been there to, uh, to help out Pat Tanaka there. Diamond twice now has been Johnny on the spot. So much to fall, Diamond. Hey, backdrop. Over and down. He got a one and a half. Diamond just able to kick and get that shoulder up. Stop the count long enough. This is Billy Travis after the tag. He's up on the middle rope. And he drops down with a big arm. The teamwork star in Travis. We've got about two minutes of wrestling time left. Uh, with a couple of minutes to go, Travis and Star would like to even this son of a gun up. Billy is working for it right now. He had a two count on Diamond. He's got a cover and a count of two, but again, Diamond's able to kick out of it. Mm. Yeah. Hey, Billy really uh, in here like a house of fire today. He and Star. Oh, there's Tanaka down on the floor. Mark Star in to battle Paul Diamond in the ring. Billy and Tanaka going at it down here on the concrete. We've got two matches going on. Travis and Tanaka. Star and Diamond. Tanaka left. Back. Uh, referee he's fighting on the floor, he's just stopping it. Yeah. it yeah. He's just going to stop the entire thing. Mark Starr and Billy Travis very unhappy about it because they know they got cheated out of the first fall of action. And uh, then they had this one stopped in there. When the tempers get up a little bit, it's pretty difficult to keep these young guys under control yeah, in there, that's and that's true. exactly what happened here with the referee. Ended up uh, being stopped, so it's still one fall to none for Tanaka and uh, Paul Diamond. Okay, we're going to check our time. I think it is finally out, and we'll be back in just one moment. Tanaka and Diamond are devious methods, but they do get the victory one fall to none officially in the record books over Billy Travis and Mark Starr. Earlier, we had the Nasty Boys in here. They got a victory in their match. Very impressive. Jeff Jarrett won his match with no difficulty over uh, Rooster Cogburn. Big Bubba, boy, going against Don Bass, jumped by the Moon Dogs. They busted those boards over, and he was not in good shape when he Held the doors so nobody could come in and help Big Bubba out. You might add that, too. 
it was quite an afternoon there. Do uh, Big Bubba, they finally uh, helped out of here, and uh, I'm sure that uh, the Moon Dogs will get paid back for that by Big Bubba someday down the road. Mm, book it. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> I got to tell you. We did have a whale of a day of action right here, and by golly, I'll tell you what, the situation with Dundee, George Barnes, and Rocky Johnson, something else for Dave Brown. Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody. The announcers on this program are selected and paid by parties other than this station, namely the promoters of championship wrestling.